who wins this game? Skip, the Titans have been playing unbelievable, and I expect that to continue. But uh, the Chiefs, I just think they can score too many points. I just think Patrick Mahomes is on another level. He's been great since he's been back from that knee injury. That cost him to miss about two and a half games. They lost his first game back in Tennessee, but he threw for 446 and three touchdowns in his first game back. And last week when they fall behind 24-0, he didn't panic. He was unbelievable down the stretch. The Titans' defense, Skip, has used a turnover to create short fields and, and to produce points. Um, Patrick Mahomes, though, on the other hand, has been great at taking care of the football this year. Only five interceptions. And they have been great at home. Um, and so I'm going to take the Chiefs, and I think this game is going to get away from uh, the Titans late. I got the Chiefs 33-20. to 20. Hmm. Um, And I understand it, the Chiefs need to make this game. They can't do what they did last week. They can't, and, and the thing what happens is, Skip, is when you get a punt block or you have some deficiencies, the other team looks and says, okay, this is where we can get them. I think Andy shores that up. I think the special teams shore that up. And I think Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, Nicole, Nicole Hardman, I just think they're too much. And I think late in the ball game, it would come crystal clear to the Titans that we've had a great season, but our Cinderella uh, run is over. Mm. And I believe the uh, Chiefs go on to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl hmm. by the score of 33 to 20 over the Tennessee. 33 to 20. Yep. And by the way, we already made one bet on this game in which my partner across the table gave me Titans plus 10. Yeah, Correct? yeah, yeah. You don't want to renege on that today? Nope. Okay, nope. thank you You're very good much. with my homeboy. So, in yeah. this, the 100th season of the great National Football League, <laughs> the fitting conclusion what the NFL gods would proclaim to happen should be Kansas City versus Green Bay in the Super Bowl because that would be a rematch of the first ever Super Bowl, yeah. which wow. was played out here in the Coliseum. That was on January 15th of 1967. Mm -hmm. And the Packers, coached by Vince Lombardi, won that game pretty easily, 35-10, to 10, although they outscored the Chiefs 21 to nothing in the second half. Right. And it was Bart Starr to Max McGee for a couple of big touchdowns. Hank Stram was on the sideline. He line was. For the he was. He was. So the, it, wouldn't it be the, uh, the perfect way? Well, that, that it really would. That you know, just to come yeah. full circle yeah. back to that, that one in the 100th it. year, <sighs> I have a nagging suspicion that ain't happening. In fact... My gut feeling is just the opposite is going to happen, and we'll get to the other game in just a moment. But remember the Titans. <laughs> it was a great Denzel movie. Yep. And my nagging suspicion is it's becoming the tagline for these NFL playoffs. It might even become the hashtag for these NFL Titans. Remember the Titans. Mm -hmm. So you might remember that I picked the Titans, I think you also did too, to upset New England at New England. I did. We did. Yeah, we both correct. did. And then the next time around, I picked the Titans to upset Baltimore at Baltimore. Yes, you did. I and I told Lamar. you how much I hated making the pick because I wanted to see Lamar in this Super Bowl. Right. That obviously did not happen. So, you can say third time will not be the charm. You ride it. But I'm doing it again. <laughs> I'm going to pick the Tennessee Titans to pull off the quote-unquote upset at Kansas City. And this time, I don't believe it'll be an upset. You called it the end of the Cinderella story. I don't think they're Cinderella anymore. Hmm. I think they're just legitimately the better team this Sunday at Kansas City. I think the Tennessee Titans are the mentally and physically toughest team left in all of these playoffs. Of all the four teams, they are the mentally and physically toughest and the best coached of these four teams. You might, you might agree with that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they, okay? they, they definitely... And I believe the most unstoppable weapon left in these playoffs is not Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> it's number 22 for the visiting Titans. Yeah. It's Derrick Henry, who I've started calling Eric Henry because he's the next Eric Dickerson. And we're about to have, in just a few minutes, sitting right here, yeah. the, the real-life Eric Dickerson to talk about Derrick Henry and his chances at Kansas City. You know and I know, if that man does what he did to New England and to Baltimore, to the Chiefs, 
they're going to have a hard time winning this game. Absolutely. If he goes for 180 or 190 or 200 plus, they're going to have a hard time winning this Very game. Hard. And I'm going to remind you that the Chiefs during the regular season ranked 26th against the rush. Mm-hmm. So you would think advantage Titans there, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. You would think huge disadvantage Titans when it comes to quarterback. I'm not so sure about that. Oh, it is a disadvantage. You know that. Okay, I, I hear what you're saying. I have never been a Ryan Tannehill fan, and when I made my prediction of Tennessee winning at Tom Brady, I said, I can't believe I'm picking Ryan Tannehill to upset Tom Brady. Ryan Tannehill didn't have just a good year. He quietly had a great year. Yes. He is easily the most underrated quarterback left in these playoffs. Absolutely, yeah. And to me, I believe he's the most underrated playoff quarterback since that kid from Michigan drafted in the sixth round helped carry the New England Patriots in 2001 all the way to the Super Bowl through the tuck rule game, obviously. (laughs) And Tom got hurt at Pittsburgh Pittsburgh. and got a little help from Drew Bledsoe, and then he pulled off that last-ditch drive for the last-ditch field goal to win that game in the Super Bowl. I think Ryan Tannehill is going Tom Brady on these playoffs because – the note I saw yesterday from Pro Football Focus that was the most shocking Pro Football Focus note of the year was Ryan Tannehill, they graded number one in the regular season of all quarterbacks. They said he graded out the best. Skip Bayless, that will be the equivalent of somebody coming half the year and becoming valedictorian. The hell you say? But he You're not going to be valedictorian played, after no eight games? He played 11 games. No, still not enough. Okay, 11 to me is out of 16, so that's 11 sixteenths of the season. No. What about the other five? The other five, he'd have stunk it up. He might have. Yeah. And he doesn't throw a lot, but when he throws, exactly. it's really, really good. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> he only throw it 13 times a game, Skip. He does throw it. In <laughs> fact, wh- while you bring that up, at New England, he was 8 of 15 okay. for 72 yards. Yeah. And at Baltimore, he was 7 of 14 for 88 yards. So he threw it 14 times okay. a game. Okay. And yet, Pro Football Focus said he had the third best percentage of, of good throws mm-hmm. and the third best percentage of, of throws that were not uh, turnover worthy. Okay. You know, like clean throws. So he was just doing it the highest level all season long without big numbers. Well, the right? thing is, Skip, what helped him is because, as you, uh, you alluded to, he started 11 games. Well, eight games, Derrick Henry had the most rush yards in NFL history mm-hmm. over an eight-game span. So now, when you run the ball like they can, okay. you play action off of that. Thank you. <laughs> and I do agree with that. And that's how he is benefiting. Yes. That's why his throws are graded so high yeah. because somebody's always going to be open. Wide open. Wide open. And when you think about his weapons, they're obviously not Tyreek and Sammy and Kelsey and blah, 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 blah. Nico Harbour. Nico. You wanted Nico in New England. Did I? <laughs> but think about what he does have when you least expect it. Mm. He's got a breakout receiver from Ole Miss named A.J. Brown. Mm-hmm. And... Again, he's caught like two balls in the playoffs, but but he, he can do it. Yes. He, he can get behind you. Right. Corey Davis, their other receiver, was the fifth overall pick in the draft out of Western Michigan. He's six feet three inches tall. He's a weapon that they don't utilize much right. unless you don't cover that weapon on one single play that's going to turn the game right. around, right? Yep. And guess who's back? Adam Humphreys is finally healthy. He missed their first two playoff games. Right. Adam Humphreys was one of the top targets of Bill Belichick in this in last year's free agent period. And, of course, Bill's not going to pay the freight that the Titans paid for right. Adam Humphreys. Right. But as a slot receiver, he's Edelman-esque, yeah. right, when Edelman was used to right. be right. Yeah, and Coach okay. Belichick was looking he's going to be a younger, okay. longer, more production. Okay, he is back. And then the tight ends, they don't have a Kelsey, but they have three who are all – Pretty to very good. I don't know. They just keep making plays. Right. Every time I look up, it's Johnu Smith or it's Ferkser or it's Nicole Pruitt. It's, it's somebody's always making some play because they just get open right. because you're trying to stop 22. And their tight end skip are more blockers than receivers. Mm-hmm. But they, like you said, they get, normally get open because they slip out because you're expecting to run. And the next thing you know, the guy's wide open. Now, Johnu Smith didn't make an unbelievable catch on that one against Brandon Carr that really kick-started and got them going because that was third and goal. 
It was third and goal. So speaking of that play, could could we see four straight plays that that this guy, I don't know how he did it, but Ryan Tannehill made these four throws that changed their season because the first one came to the aforementioned Adam Humphreys, mm-hmm. if we could see this. This is 23 yards against the Chiefs with only 23 seconds left. He hits Adam Humphreys for a touchdown that won the game. That made it 35-32. to 32. And there's the one to Ferkser. That was third and eight from the 15-yard line at New England to ice the game. And here he goes again. There's Jonu Smith. And it was a really great catch, but it was a pretty good throw, too. Right. And then just when you least expect it, this made it 14 to nothing. What? Yeah. Where did that come from? Mm-hmm. Khalif Raymond mm-hmm. out of Holy Cross, undrafted. Yeah. What? Holy, Holy cow. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's what it- Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.